This is the World View Podcast, episode 25 for the week of June 7, 2016. Okay, let's go. Welcome to the Football Review, an affiliate of the Transfers Rumors fan site. Here at this podcast, we are dedicated to bring you the discussion, debate, analysis, and dissection of football topics from the Premier League and around the world. And today, I am joined by Nikki and Akevin once again. Hello. Hello. And we are, me and Akevin are together on Skype with Nikki, so... Hopefully that the sound goes pretty okay, pretty all right. Not our usual recording setup, but it should be fine all the same. We have some big news to discuss, some big transfers are happening, and some big questions to be answered of the future of some certain Jamie Vardy. And then after that, we will be discussing the Euro groups C and D. We did not discuss those last time. Of course, the Euro previews will be wrapped up this Saturday. Despite the Euro already starting, we'll wrap up our previews on Saturday. And it should all be good. So, Nicky, yeah. we're going to start off with discussing the big one. Jamie Vardy to Arsenal. Want to break down how this has been going down? Okay, so basically, he was supposed to have a decision, apparently, before he boarded the flight to go to France. And nobody knew at the time what was happening. Then all these photos were going around Twitter. Photoshop version of Jamie Vardy holding an Arsenal shirt. Except it was just photoshopped and it was actually Shaka. Yeah. And now... And now, everybody, now it's starting to say people are starting to believe that Jamie Vardy is not going to, uh, not going to Arsenal, and then it, Arsenal have also stated they do not want Mahrez and they want, they really want Jamie Vardy, and yes. his teammates t- apparently told him before the flight they said, don't go to Arsenal, reject Arsenal, stay at Leicester, so it's a tough decision for Jamie Vardy because you look at it, this can help him increase his England reputation for the 2018 World Cup because he's going to be playing for a bigger side. And yes, you look, you look at all that and look at about how, how much weight he's getting. You look at his age. He yeah. probably might not have another chance like this to play for a big team like Arsenal, just considering yes. his age. He's 29 now. Uh, if he, if he, I don't know how he's going to be next season. That's a problem. One bad season at Leicester next, next year could stop teams like Arsenal from pulling, bringing him in. Bringing him in. So I think, like, you know... Like, Miguel Michu. Remember Miguel Michu at Swansea? Yeah, it was like that. It's exactly like that. Swansea should have cashed in for him. Yeah, he had the, the one good season. season. Like, if, if you stay at Arsenal, even if you don't do well, you're still at a big club. Yeah, and you have you're more st- money. Like, so it's, in that sense, a good move. It, we're looking at how the transfer has gone down. So, from what we understand, the release clause has been triggered by Arsenal, £20 million. Pounds. Vardy, it's all down to him now. Leicester cannot reject it. This has been... Uh, corroborated by Reni Arias, and it is true. It's all to Vardy's decision now. Um, Leicester tried to counter-offer this with a £100,000 a week for Vardy, but it can't compete with £1,000 a week. I, I hear from The Guardian and The Mirror telling us this from these sources. And from what we understand, it is all down to Jamie Vardy. So we're going to go around the room discussing what do you think it's a good yeah, idea Yeah, around the room on Skype. Yeah, sure. But Ekevin, what do you think? Good idea for Vardy or no? Well... Considering his wages, I think it's to go to Arsenal, you would get more money there, but you would be un- under lock at a bigger club. Yes, from where you from where you were the best player at. Yes, the, the pressure is starting to rise, and Jamie Vardy and and, he, and and concerned about his age also. It's not he he won't be a long term striker. I think at Arsenal, I think they need a younger version and a long term striker. That's true. Arsenal will have to go out in a couple of years again to buy. And refresh that when Vardy does think, eventually age. I think if Dybala was available this summer, I think it would have went for him. Because Dybala, I think, for, for the Serie A, I think he's quite too good for them now. But yeah. the thing, it's actually, a, if, if you think about it, in the sense, it, it seems strange that Arsenal would go for an, an old player like Vardy. It's, Even though he's been superb this season, so there's, a, there's a huge gap in that striker position. And they need a young talent to come in. And then... The last player... It's, just, it's very Wenger-like. Yeah. Wenger doesn't make the impulse signings. He doesn't do it. And it's very strange. But I, I understand the, the clamoring for a Premier League proven goal scorer. But, I, like, but think, the thing is, the I think... The reason Newcastle went hype. down this, this, this year was because they didn't have a Premier League proven goal scorer. 
But you, and there is no better Premier League proven goal scorer right now than Jamie Vardy. But then you look at the hype he's going to get when he goes to Arsenal. He's going to have so much pressure on him. And then to keep that starting 11 p- position with that amount of pressure on him, because you, uh, you look at his price tag, it's going gonna, it's gonna to go up com- um, immensely after he joins Arsenal. And it's going to be... Yeah. It's going to be one of those things where he has to live up to his he's going to well the fans want him to live up to his hype and if he's not if he's not doing that you know it's going to affect his the fans will yeah. affect the way he plays and I think it's really it's really stressful for him in a sense and I think this is like the worst thing for him to think about going to the Euros. Yes. I don't think this is yes, good yes. for him at all. That's that's why I said that's why I'm saying Make a de- decision now before the Euros start. You shouldn't be thinking about this going into the Euros. Yeah, the and, timing. And he, even, and he hasn't even thought. The thing is, he hasn't thought about this. He hasn't thought about his Euro performance. If he plays superb in the Euros, it's not just Arsenal that are going to want him. It's going to be big, bigger teams like Manchester United. There's going to be even more clubs after him. That's what he has to take into account. Yeah, for sure. And I think one thing that was said was, if you stay at Leicester, you have the capacity to go on and be a legend. Like, they'll build a statue of you. You'll be worshipped if you stay at Leicester. Going to Arsenal, you're going to ruin what you've been building up there. I think that's a huge thing to consider. Also, one thing I've said is, Jamie Vardy is Leicester's leader in so many ways. He leads their counter-attack. He leads their ambition. He leads because their he's, desire. He's got that pace to, to yeah. be that attacker. He's got, the, he's got both the playing style and mm. the mentality. And like you know, He motivates them as well. He yells at them. He motivates them. He leads them through his motivation and his yelling and all that. You think if he were to go away from Leicester, he'd be leading a lot of those stars, like Mares and Kante, to leave Leicester as well. I know that Chelsea and PSG are battling for Kante. Yes, but I think this the thing about this, if Jamie Vardy leaves, leaves that opens the gate yeah. for... That completely opens yeah. the gate for Kante and Mares to leave. Because yes. I, I think Vardy, in some way... Is sort of keeping that those stars at the club. I think yeah. once he's gone, they're gone as well. And he's been told this, and he's worried about this. He had admitted that he's worried that if he leaves, he's going to start a mass exodus of all those players leaving the club. Vardy could be responsible for the club's downfall. Yes, if he leaves, that's a perspective. He can become the most hated man overnight. I think Mahrez would be the best player in Leicester right now. Yeah, I think, but Vardy I think Kante. I think Kante is the best player. I think as well, yeah. But you look. whoever leaves in the Leicester City's title win, title winning squad may open the gate for others. No, I don't yeah. think it's anybody. I like. If, let's say Danny Simpson leaves. I don't think that will open the gates for Mahrez to leave. I think it's just between it's them. Like, okay, I think okay. It Danny Drinkwater. You look at Danny Drinkwater. If Danny Drinkwater were to leave, I think that that also could like. You look at the stars. If one of the stars leaves, that definitely opens the gates yeah. completely. Especially the big three, the Mahrez, Kante, Vardy. If one of them was to leave, you think Okazaki. all three would leave. I don't think Okazaki is leaving. And I think... Okazaki is going to stay. Yeah, and I think uh, the problem, the thing is now, we always talk about Arsenal. Leicester are now looking at Dini no matter what. Ranieri has stated, it doesn't matter if he's going to Arsenal, I'm still looking at Dini, I'm still going to bring him in. So That's a poor... I don't think Dini and Vardy are similar at all. I think Dini is more of a exactly, hard work game. Yeah, I, I think that's the problem. Second. Because... You can't, you can't play them together. You can't. And can will he play well with Akazaki? Vardy and Dini will work together very well. No, Vardy and will work together very well. But you shouldn't just get the same type of player in the same team because two. No, Vardy. Vardy is very different from Dini. I know, but if you get someone similar to Vardy, then it will not, it will not do well. Yeah, exactly. You need someone. That, and for Arsenal, nobody in that team is even comes close to Vardy's just pace. His counter-attacking ability, and he's just he's constantly ha- harassing the opposition defenders. So, talking about the style of Arsenal, the fact that Leicester like to counter-attack, Arsenal love possession. They come up against teams where they have eleven men behind the ball against Arsenal. But you look at Arsenal; they've got the player he players he's going to be playing with. It doesn't matter what type of football they're playing because he's got he's got big stars to back him. He's got Sanchez. He's got Özil. He's got so many stars that can. Just help him become yes. become that player. Yes. But at the same at the same time, you know, it's a real. I think for Arsenal, it's also a risk at the same time, because they it, def- it definitely po- is. they're potentially at, yeah. The fact that Okazaki 
Yeah. Cause Go ahead. you look at Va you look at sorry, you look at Vardy's resume. Okay? Let's look at it. He even said himself, he's like every time every his first season in Leicester, poor. First season in in Fleetwood, poor. Second season, third season, much better. Always in the first season, he struggles. He always struggles. And that that's that's a strange thing. And yeah. I think if he goes to Arsenal, same will happen. Okazaki has said that he will fit Arsenal. That's a very from Okazaki. I think Okazaki should, should be saying stay at Leicester, but he said he's saying you will do well at Arsenal. So he's saying that. That's a very strange he thing. Wants to, he wants. I think he wants to have that starting eleven position, just full time. That could be a, maybe, maybe, but I don't think that's true. Oh. But Ranieri the top man. He turned all these players into a top four team. This season, yes, this, these players were not even top four quality until Ranieri came in. So Ranieri has to start spending if he if he if he knows that he's going to lose his stars and he has, and he will turn them into into title winning teams again. But no, I don't think Ranieri will do this ever again. But, but also, I think if if you <clears throat> if we're on the news of Leicester and transfer news, Leicester are looking to bring in Chamberlain. Oh yeah, that could be a good one. How does how do you think but, that works? Wait, that's that's. Me. Alright, so that's the question. No, he'll play on the he'll play on the other side. He'll play he'll replace all Brighton. Yeah. I think we should we should wrap up the discussion. I mean, on Vardy, on the decision. Is it a good decision? Bad. Stay at Leicester. Or go to Arsenal. I, I think, think stay at Leicester. Stay Nikki? Leicester. Stay Leicester. I think stay at Leicester as well. I think it's, we all say stay at Leicester. Arsenal. We know why you want him. I think Vardy stay at Leicester. Arsenal go for a younger striker. Go for a Morata or a Lacazette. Don't go for Vardy. I think uh, Morata. Yeah, I don't think that you should go for Vardy at all. I'd I, be happy I, about I, Morata. Because and Chelsea I think that this, if if he does sign Vardy, that's probably his last signing for the whole summer. No, I think he's still going to go for a centre back. Let's just forget. Kulabali, he still might be chasing Ricardo Rodriguez. R- Rodriguez. Don't is, rule that out. No. Don't rule that out. I think. Don't rule out that. I think Chelsea have a choice: either pick Ricardo or they pick Stefan. I think they're taking it either. I think uh, they don't. I mean, I would pick Licksteiner personally. I think because I want Baba to get a chance. I don't want Ricardo to come in and we take take away Baba's chances. Yeah, but then you've got you've got an amazing left back, an amazing young left yeah. back. Yeah, but I I want homegrown players as well. That's that's important. Baba's not English but, though. Yeah, but I want players that Chelsea bought for cheap and then. Make them big, you know. Every Chelsea fan wants that. But homegrown but like most is is the doesn't that mean he's in homegrown English player? Like he's English, Baba's not English. No, but if if he spends five years at Chelsea before the age of wait, he's only twenty, so he can't be homegrown. But the point yeah. is, he, he's still like, again. He's still a Chelsea young player, and I want to see these Chelsea young players do well. But you can see a young player. What world big stars come in. I see why you're. I see what you mean, but I still I disagree. I think I want Baba to succeed. And then you sell. He tri- deserves. And then you bring in. We bring in Embolo, and we sell Traore. No, no, I would really no. disagree with that. I really like Traore. I think there's so many. You watch <clears throat> Traore you- carefully. He he's his brain is as sharp as a knife. The way he moves across to get the chances, I have not seen a striker his age. Would you want to move risk, so well? Would you want to risk selling a youth player who has a. A, t- a high potential to be a good you player know, the, in the future. The, the, the first you realize he's a youth player for a youth player. I think I no, think Tri- Bolo is even younger. I have my first. My Traore scored his first goal here in I, Bangkok. I said, I said, if he if Mbolo is going to go anywhere, it's West Ham. He ha- if he's going to go anywhere, he's, he should go to West Ham. In the four 0 win. In the four 0 win. Oh, he scored. I'm pretty sure that's true. I, I don't know. I think, no, he, I think he, he either. Scored no, he made his debut in Thailand, and then he scored his first goal in Malaysia. Oh, it was like he was going. Yeah, he's made his debut in Thailand in front of. I was us. Really, Yeah, we, we went there. together. We went together and we watched Traore's debut. And even from then, we could say this guy is a very good player. <laughs> I think keep Traore, keep Traore, no question. But you look at the three clubs that are now <laughs> after Mbolo. It seems like every every month you've got more clubs in for it. Um, you've got now you've got then Liverpool, you've got Tottenham. Clubs. And then, no point in the clubs for a young player. Now Manchester United That's the big have club. said they might be interested in him. That's three clubs after Mbolo. Wait until the Let Euros. Them... 
Let them, let them do that. I mean, you don't chase young players. You make young players. That's what Chelsea should do. Don't chase other young players. I no, I'm talking about other. I'm talking about Mbolo transfer. I'm not talking about Chelsea anymore. Yeah. Okay. So let's that, let's look at the next Arsenal transfer. Henrik Mkhitaryan could be on his way to Arsenal. So one more or, one Chelsea. One or Chelsea. Or Chelsea. You, you Which he's already. I think he's turning down Chelsea. Yeah, she's going for Theo Walcott last year. No, they're going for Chamberlain. Available this summer. Yeah. yeah, someone make a tire and go to Arsenal. I think Mkhitaryan <clears throat> would be a smart man to move to the Premier League because that Dortmund team is collapsing. It's sad to say, but it is. You've lost Hummel. That Dortmund team is collapsing. But is Arsenal a good destination for Henrik Mkhitaryan? To play with Sanchez, Ozil, and Mkhitaryan attacking three. Is that good? That's good, but I think... I don't... I think... Uh... I I don't know because you look at it. I think Bayern will be after if he stays at Dortmund. Bayern are after him next year. No, no, yes. no way. Mkhitaryan is not going to go to Bayern. He's not going to Bayern. There's no way. There's so many players there. In his well, then where's he going to go? Because I don't no, think I don't think sorry. Arsenal are going to sign him. No. I don't think Arsenal are going to sign him. You know Dortmund Why sold Hummels, right? But they got but they got a player in return, Sebastian Road. Oh, they got they've got Sebastian, Sebastian Road is terrible. Why would you want him? <clears throat> no, he's not Tuchel terrible. Tuchel could make him yes, good. Yes. I have yeah. Utter respect in Thomas Tuchel to make him a great player. So, looking at Mkhitaryan, good signing for Arsenal, and is it going to happen? No, what it's you... not going to happen, but it's a good signing. I think Mkhitaryan, they, he's going to get replaced by Osmani Dembele. Dembele yes, yes. I was heard by MGH. Um, so, if he, go, if he goes to Arsenal, I think it'll it'll make their attack much better, but does he have the pace to be a to to be? Yeah, that? I think he has the pace, but I just, yeah, like, I really have the problem. I think he has the pace as well. Yeah, like I th- I think it's um I don't think it's a t- I think he has to adapt a little bit. But I think I think Mars would be a I better signing German, for German. I think German football is how, how do you what? It's closer to the Premier League of the Serie A. It's cl- yeah. Or yeah. Spat- I mean Swiss Swiss football is is very close to the Premier League as well. But then you look. Uh, I'm not yeah. sure. German football is also close, closer to the Premier League than the Serie A. But still, there's a few differences there. I think the the league that's probably the, the least is the Eredivisie, which is more tactical. Moving on to Manchester United, Eric Bailey and Slavia Ibrahimovic. I've could be never ever seen Eric Bailey play before. I know he plays for Villarreal, but I think no. What well, one thing we're going to have to discuss with Eric in, Bailey is of course. Mourinho's in front of him, I think. Um, uh, I think that one thing to discuss is something that was brought up by Terry Fleurs from Devil's Terrace. Um, that the fact that Eric Bailey, many United fans have never seen Eric Bailey play before, yet <coughs> they trust Mourinho and they trust Mourinho's judgment fully on signing Eric Bailey. But when you, when you look at John Stones, many United fans don't trust Mourinho with John Stones. So Why it's not? creating a standard. There. They just don't want John Stones. It's creating a double standard. And I think everyone that I've... I, I, my opinion on John Stones is just from this season was that he was terrible. I have listened to many people who have watched him and have played with him. And I think Phil Neville will give an interview where he said that John Stones this season has been very poor. He's been very poor compared to how he usually is in regular seasons. So I think that because of... Because of... We're just seeing a bad sample of John Stones. Maybe if we see him come to United and work under the best defensive coach in the world... He could become the next Ricardo Carvalho, because I've I've said if you're gonna look at Mourinho is gonna build at United, look at Chelsea 2005. He won players similar to that style, and I think Chris Smalling will be like the John Terry of, the, of that team. I think John Stones will be like the Ricardo Carvalho of that team, and it will be a very good partnership of the ball winner and the ball player. It could work very very well at United. So if you had to choose Bailey or Stones. Bailey. So because I've never seen Bailey play, and I, I, I have to look at, I have to look at it first, and I have, I'm gonna have to compare it. Yeah. For now, I will, I, I will, I will want John Stones for now. Yeah. But let me, I, I have to go look at Bailey at, for, for, to be, to be sure. Yeah. I mean, I, 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 I've seen a bit of Bailey if he played against Liverpool. I've not seen a bit of him against Liverpool. Yeah, I mean, he's played against. But Liverpool. it wasn't enough to tell me 
whether he's actually. But even Vidic had enough. tough times against those strikers like Torres and all, and then he's still a good defender. Yeah, I mean, yeah, we're looking at a tough time against top top players. I mean, John Stones. I mean, forty five million is too much for John Stones. I think the young. That's the, too much. The younger has lo- the young has lots of pressure. Yeah. So John Stones, you just give him time, and then I think he'll be a I think he'll be a good player. I know. Slatan could announce his transfer to United tonight. Today. Today, tonight, today. It's still early morning in Britain, so yeah. later tonight. Come on, guys. Could be announced. What do you think of this transfer? I think I I I'm not. I wasn't watching United at the time, but people, United United fans say it reminds them of Cantona because Cantona was like that player that came in and then was brilliant. And but the, the thing is, Cantona came in at a much younger age. Zlatan's coming in with but, but Cantona, two no, years no, but, left, prob- most likely. No, no, no. Cantona came in at the age of like 30-something. Yeah, but so, this guy's 34. But it, yeah, but the way how the way how he the way, the way how he, Cantona came in and made the team like world class was like is the it, it can be like Zlatan coming to United. They, it, it reminds it reminds him about Cantona, but he's not a, like a Cantona player. It just yeah. reminds him of Cantona yeah, of the effect he's gonna have on the yeah. team. Yes, I think Zlatan will be huge for winning the title. Everywhere I, Zlatan I don't goes, think he, would he score wins as many league. goals as he would because the Premier League is is tougher than ever. So you, so you, yes. would, you had to sco- I think it would be scoring less, less yeah. goals. But no, I don't but think Zlatan can score go- goals anywhere. Right. You look at all the leagues he's played in; he scores goals anywhere. I think the Premier League, he he, he I, can do it there as well. I think no, but on his first year, it'll be tough first. Then I think he'll sign another contract because he's. I, I, what I've heard, he's going to get one year on it, and then well, probably get an option to extend. But we know Mourinho is a good friend of Zlatan. We. If he wins the league, and the Omens are good <coughs> for our matches with United. I think, yes, Zlatan to United, I say it's a good transfer. I like Zlatan, he's a funny he's guy. A funny guy. Yeah. So I think we're all agreeing Zlatan would be a great transfer to go to United. He won't be like a Shevchenko, don't worry. It's, it's like Inter like Milan to Manchester. Yeah, because Mourinho and Zlatan were both well, one's Inter, Inter, now at United. That's a good, that's a good, that's a good, that's a good thing. way of describing it. Wanted Inter and then now United. We're looking at Ronald Koeman possibly on his way to Everton. Is this a good transfer? Yes. A good, I would. You know move. what? Out of out of Mourinho, I would have I would have wanted Ronald Koeman. I think he. Is what? That that. Yes. Uh, if Mourinho didn't come, I would have wanted Ronald. Oh, Koeman. so you said? Oh, so you said over Mourinho? I was like, what? Uh, Ronald Koeman is absolutely like just he, he since he came into Southampton, they they were second second in the league. With Pele scoring eight nil, Sunderland six four nil, Stoke everything. Little Southampton were just bossing us. Like, yeah, you can see that. One thing is, is this a, a step up? Is it really a step up or is it a yes, step sideways? It, it, I think. I no, think it is because you look at the money that's coming in next season. Yeah. He yeah. has total control over that team. I think. I think it's gonna be a step. Now they have. They're, they're gonna. They're gonna invest a lot of money into the club. Yeah, the new owners, he's, Farhad Moshidi. He's, is, yeah, but he's going to be, he's going to be, think, the thing is, he's going to be part of that, he's, he's going to be part of that Everton team that now, um, now is starting to become sort of transition to city type team, like Manchester City when they first took over. He's sort of doing that with them. Yeah, that, that could definitely be an improvement for, but you think if he held out for one more year, would he get the Arsenal job? But yeah. Will Wenger get sacked? I don't know anymore. You see, like Martinez, one year Arsenal wanted him badly after yeah. after that, but then now you think, look at he was a failure. Yeah, well, Southampton will be really desperate. So if Wenger wins the league, he will leave on a high. Can we agree with that statement? Yes, yes. Like Fergie, yeah. if he wins, the league, he will leave he on might, a high. He might not. He might extend, but I don't think he will. Yeah. So you think if he waited one more year at Southampton, well, it's not confirmed. Think, but if he waits one more year. Will he get the Arsenal job? No, I don't. Depending, depending I don't think where so. he fits in the league, because you want you want a top you want a manager who, who has the ability to finish in the top four. Will Unai get the Arsenal job? No, if he doesn't, will he no, go to em- Barcelona? Emery, Emery, I don't think he'll get the Arsenal yeah, job. Forty five, both Barcelona and Arsenal. I do not believe the Barcelona rumor that much, because 
the manager of Barcelona is always just a figurehead. He never actually needs to make any innovations because it's just taking Johan Cruyff, the structure that's already there, and putting it back in place. The only manager that came in and changed things was Pep Guardiola. He reinstated that Cruyff system. Since then, they stuck with the Cruyff system completely unless, unless until, what was it, Gerardo Martino came in. Changed Gerardo it. Martino, yeah. He changed it a bit. Tata. He changed it a bit. Tata Martino changed it a little bit. He got sacked and went back to the Guardiola system. So Barca still play the Guardiola system. But it wasn't their worst season and when yeah. they finished, when Valencia won so, the league back in 20, 2005. Because it was a low. It was the worst season there. I think bringing in someone like Emery, who's going to change things around, I don't think Barca want that. And I don't think Emery wants to be in a position where his he's tactics at risk. predetermined. Emery's tactics, he's told, play like Croy, play like Guardiola. He might not want to do that. Of course, yeah, I think he wants to. In, um, he wants to implement his own okay. his own tactics. Yes, he doesn't want to play but by of course the, the job. He, but still, he wouldn't want to Bar- play. I think if you're if you're a respectable manager, you don't want to play. You want to play by your own managerial style. You want to have your own managerial reign on the team. You want to have. Yeah. A, I don't think you want to. You want to be in, have. The Barcelona's taxes just implemented for you. You want you're here to manage. You're not here to, to, uh, uh, yeah. yeah. There, yeah. But I think it's hard to reject the Barca job just because of the name of the club and the fact you are going to win trophies. Coaching Barca would Arsenal? Uh, that's actually controversial. Be, be, yeah. would, you look at would, Rafa. What did he win at Real Madrid? Oh, for Diego. I think Arsenal would go for Diego Simeone. Diego Simeone. But I don't I think, think he would I choose think, Arsenal over he, Atletico. I think he'll leave. Yeah, I think maybe Wenger might extend another three-year contract, and then they'll wait, and then they'll wait for um, a call, call time to call him at Atletico Madrid, and then they'll want to bring him in because they're looking at him from when Atletico Madrid first made it to the Champions final back in 20, 2014. Yeah? yeah, they were looking at him then, and Arsenal had a really bad season from 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 January to the end. All right, so we're gonna talk, uh, leave it at an ultimatum at the end. Who is going to be, who is more likely to replace Arsene Wenger in the Arsenal job? Unai Emery or Diego Simeone? Emery. Emery. If more realistic would be Emery. So, more realistic, yes. But but Simeone, you can't rule that out. Yes, Simeone you can. Want to come to you look at the, um, the dynasty he's building. The dynasty he's, no, but, bu- he's building at Atletico. Why would he leave uh, all that? And drop it for for Arsenal. All the best managers. Just because all the best managers are there doesn't mean that means if all the best managers are there, he could dominate Spain. No, yeah, he, but he wants to be. You want to test your wits against the best. I think that would be an appealing option for Simeone. That be. A, you want to test I your wits against the best, or do you want to, or do you want to stay at a club where you can win trophies? Because all the best managers are in, in England. Simeone is a fighter. He likes to fight and he likes to win. I think I want to see one more season of Emery. If Emery can get Sevilla into the top four, I think then he would be worthy of the job. So, end of this year, when the decision comes, if Emery does get Sevilla into the top four, I think, yes, he gets the Arsenal job. But for now, I think Simeone is better poised for that one. All right, so we're talking about the Euro groups. Ekman has to go. I can do a little bit of it. All right, great. We can do the Euro groups. How about Euro group C? Let's load that really quick with Germany, Northern Ireland, Poland, Poland and Ukraine. Who's going to win the group? Germany, easy. Germany, easy. I think Poland are going to come second. Yeah. I think Northern Ireland and yeah. Ukraine are going to come fourth. I think that's good. Yeah. Nikki, what do, you, what, what, do you think, what do you think of this? What do you think of this group? I think obviously the favorites are Germany. Yeah. But Poland, sh- you can't rule them out against Germany. You never know what they can do with Lewandowski yeah, up front. And I, I think Poland. And I was I went back watched and watched um, Germany before the Euros. They may be struggling now. They always struggle. They always this happens to them every time. They always struggle before the Euros against. They lost to Switzerland. They lost to us five three before the, they went to the Euro twenty twelve. I think but, once they get to the Euros, they're going to show why they're the world champions and they're going to play well and think they'll top this group. Poland are, second, third Northern Ireland, and Ukraine to bomb it. 
but they weren't yeah. bothered about the Euros. Like they, they they were just resting their players for the Euros. They, they're not bothered about friendlies. They they just they just want to. Yeah, that's true. I mean, Germany. No, but always... look, you look at the you look at that England in, in match. World, you look at that England world. match. You look at that England match. They had a they had a decent enough team to beat England, but, and they still lost. They they always play badly in front before they, the Euros. They went zero, but they weren't even playing like Royce. They weren't even playing like you know. Yeah, but still, they had a decent enough team to beat England. Anybody, it's you can beat England easily. Oh wow, harsh. No. But let's let's just say that Germany and Poland are most likely to reach top two. We all think Northern Ireland will finish above Ukraine. You agree with that, Ekman? Yes. Now that's an interesting one because Northern Ireland. This is their first ever Euros. First place playoff. First, uh, first ever Euros from Northern Ireland, but they did very well to finish top of the group with Romania. And they, they finished above the world. The Europe's best defense. I have a better squad than Ukraine. Because the league they play, look at Ukraine, all their players are either from Dnipro, Dinamo Kiev, or Shakhtar. That's, the same, Those with, are the, that's big... the same with Germany as well, though. They've got a lot of players in the Bundesliga. Yeah, but you look at the fact that you have Premier League players in Northern Ireland. You've got Johnny Evans at West Brom. You've got, uh, what's his face? Stephen Davis at Hampton. Uh, Paddy McNair, Man United. You've got a lot of players. Johnny Evans. Johnny Evans? We just said Johnny Evans, though. You've got uh, Johnny Evans' younger brother. Will Grigg. Give Will him a Grigg shout. Will Grigg on fire. Give him a Kyle shout. Lafferty. You've got a lot. Yeah, Will Grigg on fire. Lafferty. You've got a lot. Of... Kyle Lafferty. Yeah, you've got... Played for Sion. Yeah, Love, that lot of... Love that guy, man. I think that was man. the chance for Ireland. No, the Ireland in the U.S. We'll ask I... Darren. We'll ask Darren about the chance. People are Northern quick Ireland. to write them up, but I think they've got a better squad than Ukraine. I know you can have Yarmolenko. I have a couple of players in general. In general, I think Northern Ireland is above above Ukraine. Yeah, Alright, so I agree with that. Let's just wrap it up. This is the group of death. D starts with death. I can have to go sadly, but we can still discuss Group D with Spain, Turkey, Croatia, and Mexico. What? Spain, Czech Republic, Croatia, and Turkey, and Mexico. Yes, I'm Mexico, of course. Mexico are in the Euros. Yes, just like Argentina, Josh Paul. Yes, Argentina are going to win the Euros. Josh Paul 2016. Who? D starts with death. This is D starts with death, right? Yeah, D starts with death. This is what, yeah. Is anyone besides I Spain going to win think, this group? I think Spain second is going to be. I'm going to Spain show right now. I think, I I think Croatia is going to come second. I think Turkey is going to come third. And Czech Republic fourth. I actually I almost agree with that. But I think Turkey finishes above Croatia. No, I don't think so. I think Croatia, for sure. Croatia, Croatia have the. They, I think they have a, a just a better overall squad, and they can they have the capability of beating Turkey. I think when they meet each other in Euros, they, they they're gonna know this is either just this this is the match that will decide second place. And I think honestly, to, um, for Croatia, they don't want to finish third because they're gonna be playing France if they finish third. Are yeah, they gonna be I... playing France or Switzerland if they finish third? I am not sure about Croatia's defense. Like it's not very good, and without Lovren, it's even worse than not very good. I think Turkey just is a better squad. They've got better. They've got Ozil Kup. They've got Turan. Who else have they got? I can hit. Shout out Blue. It's. I think the squad. Is Yilmaz. Just slightly better. Or Yilmaz. Or Burak Yilmaz. Turan. Turan. Ozil Kup. Yilmaz. It, it's a. I think it could do better than Croatia. Sahin. Nuri Sahin. I'm going to be there for the final group game, Spain against Croatia. I think Spain's going to win that. And I think on the last day, Turkey have an easier fixture than Croatia. That could be crucial. But you that, never know what could happen. You know, Croatia could pull the upset yeah. against Spain because you look at Spain. What are they doing? They left out Mata. They left out Costa. They have no goal scorer in their team. That's true. Leaving out Costa was big. I think it's all down to bias. They're really biased against Costa because of his mentality and his I attitude, think he, I, I don't think which is a very, game. very poor decision. He's, he's not a good finisher for Spain. The last, the last game he's played, he's not even scored a goal for but Spain. He's still because good... that was the 2040 World Cup, and every team that wins the World Cup, the next but, year they, they bottle it completely. Yeah. And, I, I, and I, I, think, I, think, I think also that had to do with playing in Brazil. Because, you know, I think the, the fans obviously hated him because he switched from his yes. his former nation to play for Spain. I think that had a, hu- had a huge effect 
for him going to into all those matches. Yeah, Costa would have been a much, much better decision to take than Morata. And you look at his form this season. Don't think about the way, how mad or angry he gets. Think about the quality of the player, and he yeah. is class. He is definitely I mean, awesome. I think, I don't, I don't leaving, think... Out, leaving out uh, Mata also. Yeah, purposes. leaving out Mata as well. It just, like, okay, who did they take Mata over? Who was the guy they brought in that they took Mata over for? Their midfield will be Fabregas, Iniesta, Busquets. That's already good enough. But why do you want to bring Mata in? Why? No, because you have Busquets, who's the CDM, as part of Barcelona's, like, treble winning side, right? Yeah. Yeah, You and then, and then who, I mean... Obviously, he's had a better season than Mata, and, and Spain want to play a defensive holding midfield goal rather than an attacking midfield goal, even though Spain are more of an attacking side. You've also defense. got David Silva. Yeah. Okay, got... but why? But Al um Al Qatara, Al Cantara. Yeah, yeah, go Al Qatara. Yes. Yeah. Over. Yeah. Over Mata. Mm, but Thiago has also had a really good season. He has. I, I I think it'll, it'll be tough for Fabregas to get in the squad. I think but, even though. But they also took the Bruno. They took freaking Bruno. So, oh my God, what is this? They could have they had. They had a chance of bringing Mato. They didn't. I think yeah, that's going to affect them a lot. Yes. I think Costa and Mato. That's a huge, huge um, problem there. I think Vasquez was actually a good. That's a good player. They just decided to bring in. They brought Pedro as well, and I. Yeah, Pedro. Yeah, they brought Pedro. Are they taking Alcacer? Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, no, they're not. They're not. Yeah, they're not. They're yeah. not. I'm looking at their squad right now, and it's they're, they're taking. Uh, they're taking uh, Adriz. Adriz Morata. I think Adrilito. Uh, no Alcacer in this. What is this? I'm looking okay. at their their final squad for the tournament. There's no Alcacer. Maybe yeah. he, maybe he got cut off. There's no Alcacer. Maybe maybe he got cut off. From There's the Lucas Vasquez yes. and Dolito instead of Alcacer. I. Don't think they're gonna win. I don't think they, I don't think that their, their strike force is strong but enough. I don't understand what they people are saying. Win. People are saying that um, you know they, they're gonna make it to the semifinals and all this. I don't see them. I don't see them making it to the semifinals. I see them getting knocked out in the quarters. Quarters is a minimum. Semifinals is a maximum. I th- actually, you you never know. Maybe round of sixteen. You never no. know. They, after their recent performances in the World Cup, I, I think I, I think absolutely. It's possible, but I don't think it's gonna happen. I don't. Think, I don't have, yeah, I don't see them winning do very well. They, Even they, though they've they dominated in the Euros, Louis, Louis I don't Van, see them doing it. Because Tiki Taka Spain five one. Yeah, that's true. So you, I think Van Gaal was the first manager to stop Tiki Taka. No, that was that was Mourinho, in two thousand ten. When he beat when he beat them with Inter. Oh, but, but, I'm just, yeah, I'm but, just but not Barca sure about still this played Tiki Taka, and it was easy, so easy, easy to read after the because they yeah. maybe had, they had better players to play that Tiki Taka style. Yeah, Barcelona too. Barcelona no, too but Di, Di, Di Matteo against Chelsea, he yeah he so he he, 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 he made them up. he made them take shots outside of the box. They couldn't get inside the box because he was stopping yeah. them, preventing them from trying to cut inside the box. He stopped that, so they were forced to take shots outside of the box. So, uh, we, we've got we've times up pretty much now. Nikki. Let's ra- wrap it up now. Thank you very much for listening to another episode of the Football Review Podcast. Hope you've enjoyed. Hope check you will enjoy the TR store. The TR store. Check out the TR, TR website. Channel. Fun stuff. Thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you all later. Go. Go, this yeah. is the football podcast. I started already. What the f*** are you on about? Quickly, I gotta go soon. The game. I started already. You interrupted me. <clears throat> Three, two, one, go. This is the football RB podcast, episode twenty-five for the week of two and seven. Fuck, I, I stuttered. Come on, yeah. Okay. Three, two, one, go.